Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm still tired from Toronto, so I imagine <laughs> you are as well. Uh, yeah, I was there. I wasn't there as long as I'm sure you were. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was pretty. I did Wednesday to Wednesday, and that's oh wow, about as long as you can do. A lot of traffic. Yeah, I. Uh, what's weird is you know that street that like everyone like meanders around where the big like tiff sign is. Yeah. There's a time when they open that up, and it's just like oh. I think I'm not supposed to be here anymore. <laughs> like you go from like the party for your movie. And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm definitely supposed to be here too. Oh yes. It's over. It's time to leave. <laughs> okay. Like, Oh, I'm that guy now. All right. <laughs> One more movie. Uh, congratulations though. I thank you. I definitely have to see your movie again because I probably missed about an eighth of it from all the laughter. <laughs> it was crazy. That screening was amazing. I've, I don't think I've screened a movie of mine that's had that sort of raucous response. It was pretty thrilling. I will say that when I saw Forgetting Sarah Marshall, like opening weekend back when, you know, it was like, oh, I'll just go to the movie. Yeah. That might have been one of the funniest, like people laughing screenings I've ever had of just, what the fuck is everyone saying? I just, I <laughs> that's awesome. laughing at the last line. <laughs> yeah, um, I had, it. we did a neighbor South by Southwest screening that was a similar, just like, you can't hear the last, you know, that kind of thing. It's a, a big party. There's, there's something to be said for knowing I mean, you never know, but having a good sense of like, I think I know how to make people laugh and I can do it in a lot of different ways because, you know, forgetting Sarah Marshall, uh, five-year engagement, like they're, they're very specific in the thing that they're telling, but you don't have to be do going through that to like it. But mm -hmm. if you are, you're like, oh shit, I feel seen. <laughs> like yeah. you get broken up with and see forgetting Sarah Marshall, you're like, you're spying on me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I always think that like the more specific you are, and this isn't something I, this is a common writing phrase, the more specific you are, the more kind of universal and relatable your story is, you know, the minute you're trying to make it universal and relatable, the thing becomes boring and no one relates to it. And so I'm always just like, what's the actual story? I mean, Jason Siegel was dumped while naked. I mean, that is where that came from. And like, and I remember we were working on the script and he was working on it. And then one day he was like, I think I should just be naked. And I was like, I don't think we can do that. Like, I don't think you're allowed to show Wiener in a movie. And then in a big meeting with Universal, he was like, I think I should be naked. And they were like, okay. And I was like, oh, I guess you can show Wiener. So that was, that's how it happened. Well, like, that's Judd's problem, not mine. I'm just the director. I know. I was just like, okay, I guess the, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I learned a lot about the MPAA on that yeah. one. We can do it twice, you say. All right. There's very, there's, I think there's like 23 frames of Wiener in that movie. Yeah. Very little. <laughs> I know there's people who do like, oh, we're going to shoot it with 40 frames so we can cut it. And they'll be happy that we like edit for them. And you're like, oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> like exactly what we wanted but it's true like you, you writing specific like you wrote for the muppets like the muppets is the most specific thing in the world mm -hmm. in that everybody knows what the muppet should be and as soon as they're not the first thing you hear is you fucked up the muppets and the fact oh, that yeah. you guys never heard that <laughs> is as good a compliment as any <laughs> yeah that was yeah we we thread a needle on that and i i think just you know and it's also from listening to like on the muppets um, we, they, we had all these puppeteers who had worked for the Muppets forever who kind of, you know, Jason and I wrote a version of that script and then they all like came in and they were like, this is not, the, you're breaking some of the rules of the Muppets. And we were like, oh, and at first we, you know, cocky writers, we rolled our eyes and then we were like, oh, wait a minute, it makes sense that we, we should follow some of these rules. And so we, we started following the rules. Oh, they're the rules that make us love the thing. I yeah, exactly, right. right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, then, and then just even with this, you know, writing with the person whose story you're telling, same with with some of the other projects, it's interesting to see how the voice does and doesn't change. Like, I think I can tell when I'm watching one of your movies, oh, but also they're you. very specific to the voice that's being being threaded. And I think that's a weird, like, not having an ego thing, which I'm sure, listen, I'm sure you have one, everyone does, but like being able to be in service of the writer as a director is a skill, it's a learned skill. Yeah, I think, well, thank you. That's a, a huge compliment to me. I mean, I feel like, uh, I think a big skill as a director, uh, or for me at least, is listening. Yeah. And to tell these sorts of human comedies, I have to listen to what, and that's true. I mean, it was particularly important with bros because it's a LGBTQ story, yeah. it's a gay story, it's, it's I'm straight, it's not my story, and I, I want to make sure to do right by yeah. by the story. But it's true of every, it's, very, it's true of every interaction I have on a movie from beginning to end. I mean, when an actor comes to me and says, this scene doesn't feel right, you know, I think a different person might be like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, they're probably, they could be right. They're probably right. There's probably something that's bumping them. There's probably some, you know, cause we, we all come at this art form from a different place. And so I think being open uh, to that collaboration while still having a strong sense of what the tone is, yeah. uh, I think is, is how you do it. It's the, how it's I the, do it. Yeah, no, it's the healthier version 
of only reading bad reviews. You know, like every, <laughs> right. like you read a hundred good reviews and you're like, okay, fine. You read the one bad one, like, fuck, they're right. right, right. This is the healthy version of, you know, the guy, you know, that person probably knows what they're talking about. Like they're a <laughs> successful actor. They didn't just like stumble here. Like let's, right. let's have a conversation. And I would imagine nine times out of 10, it's the movie's better for like taking a second to be like, well, well, why are you not loving this? Like, I like it. What's, what's the difference? Yeah. Most of the time, what ends up happening is you figure out a solution that's better. Yeah. So it's it's usually it's not that I mean some I mean sometimes the other person's right sometimes I'm right whatever okay. but it's 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 always a conversation or you know a debate or whatever and then usually what happens is you're like oh what about option C and that's the option that ends up being the best version and also with with comedy and especially these types of comedies and like you know sort of Judd made this an industry but you have options you can you can shoot more than one way like that's where the money goes as much as like special effects and like talent's the time it's being able to shoot multiple takes and then go okay, well, we have nine versions of this. <laughs> what is everyone like? How long should the joke go on? Like, when should we move on? Like, those are things that you especially, I think, do incredibly well. And it's so easy to, to be, like, okay at. But to, like, really hit the joke the right way and then know when to move on, it's, it's really good. Like, to go from, you know, a, a fairly, like, straightforward sex scene to, like, being scared of a bee. <laughs> like, here's, here's, you know, it's Scorsese-level editing, just in a different oh. Thank you, Dan Gabby, who edited it, will be very, that's a very uh, high compliment. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's just, it's, you know, to me, I don't like it when a movie feels riffy. Yeah. I, I think it takes you out of it. Uh, I'll certainly use improv as a tool. I use it as a tool uh, to generate more jokes. I really use it as a tool to like wake up the actors and, and, yeah. and make, the, make their performance more naturalistic. But I don't like it. I don't like it when I'm watching a movie and I don't, like, I don't like when I see a cut of one of my movies that feels like the actors are improving or riffing because then it takes you out of it. They're not, that, they're not the actual characters anymore. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, thank you so much. There's a lot of care that goes into a comedy. Uh, and and it's, it's very, everything is very specific and a lot of it's pretty invisible, um, you know, uh, but it's, it is like, as, you know, there's like a rhythm to it that you have to hit. Otherwise, the thing isn't funny. It doesn't feel alive. It doesn't feel honest. You know. But also, different movies have a different rhythm. I remember honestly, like the first time seeing Five Year Engagement, being like, "This is a, this is too long," and then realizing, well, no, there's there's a method to that. Like you're supposed to feel the length of of the relationship. Like there's a reason that this yeah. is taking longer than it should. And just I think you're so trained. You know, we were also we're still like new at the like two hour comedy at that point. Like now we're sort of trained. Like you know, a good comedy can be too out. Like, no good movie's too long, but there's a there's a rhythm. Like, here, I think the rhythm is is pretty perfect. Like, you never, you also never question where you are in the story. And that's a really hard thing, I think. A lot of times you, in a movie that, like, the plot is very simple, it's easy to go, like, well, wait, is there an hour left? Like, what else are they going to do? You never you never think that here. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, Um. I mean, I think that the, uh, you know, a big lesson that, you know, I was, when we were working on Neighbors, I remember... Like Seth said to me, I forgot who said this to him. Someone said this to him, but rather you don't when you write a script, it can't it can't be and then it's yeah. and therefore, and like that's a huge and it literally like a, a, some brain synapse connected, and I was like, oh my god, that it changed the way I approach a script and stuff. Um, which is because the the scene needs to lead to and therefore this happens. So yeah. that happened, and therefore this next thing happened, and therefore this other thing happened. It all has to proceed that way, otherwise it gets boring. And mm -hmm. and to me, I don't like. Uh, things that are boring. <laughs> no, you, and, and that's a, that's a through line in all the films that you make. Like I think for being not necessarily super plot heavy, like maybe Neighbors 2 is like the, the plot heaviest. Cause it's like, well, you know them, like they need a new adventure, but everything <laughs> does lead into the next one, especially like forgetting Sarah Marshall, because it is just following this guy through broken heart. And it's like, but this thing that he does leads to the next thing, leads to the next thing, leads to the next thing. And that's, yeah. How much of that is just once you have the cut? Like, okay, I, I made a four hour movie. This is not what I'm gonna release. How much of it is figuring out what comes and goes? Cause I'm sure you're taking out like entire scenes that are, you know, when you shot them, like, oh, this is gonna be like, I'm gonna love this scene. And then you go, oh, it's not there for it's and then. Yeah, I mean, it's figured out in the script first yeah. and foremost. Um, I would say that similar to the way uh, comedies put together, the plot, they're all, the best comedies are all heavily plotted. It's just invisible. So I do, I did in uh, uh, a thing where I watched When Harry Met Sally, one of my favorite movies. I've watched it a million times, you know, and this was an exercise and I wrote down, and I, before I did this exercise, I was like, it's kind of just, it's a kind of nice two people chatting for an hour and a half. Sure. And I wrote down what happened in every scene. 
And I looked at my the outline of what happened every scene, and I was like, oh, this is the tightest movie ever made. It is yeah. so tight. The plot is so tight. It's not, it, there's no accident that it's like this massive classic comedy, movie, you know? Um, and so, and it's true for, I think all the movies I've made, with better or worse, the yeah. plots of these movies are, are actually very tight. And then what you have to do, particularly in the romantic comedy genre, which um, you have to kind of, if it's working, it just feels like this relationship is evolving and opening yeah. it up. But w but there's so much plot and machinations happening beneath the surface. I mean, the, Billy and I, we talked about emotional stuff, we talked about the gay community, we talked about, but mainly we talked about the plot. We just talked and talked and talked and talked about it. Um, and that is, that's how you make one of these movies uh, really sing, you know? Um, so yeah. And it's a, it's a credit to both of you that, especially like the, the app scenes, like those could easily be light on the plot and just like oh this is funny or leads to a sex scene but we're kind of just like and then we go back to what we were doing and they they don't they all very tightly tie into what comes next and especially you know there's that little extra needle of like this is a new world to some people and like this is meant to be a yeah. date movie like you know we're, we're you know or like your grandfather who wouldn't have watched this movie but goes oh it looks funny i'll give it a shot like you're yeah. you gotta like there's a little bit of like taking someone by the hand and it's it's done really well and well, that's, thank you. Thanks yeah, so which I'm sure is not a conversation that wasn't had, but also like I'm sure Billy's the first person to be like, I'm telling my story. Like I'm not super. Yeah, he familiar. was. He was very. He really wanted to make sure people understood it. I think for so long he didn't feel understood, but you know, by the industry, and so he was very. He was like, we, I need to explain this, and th there were two interesting things like. We had two massive set pieces in the movie that got huge laughs in uh, with audiences that we cut out because it, where they weren't they weren't pushing the story forward. It was it was hard for me because I love jokes. Um, yeah. But there was a there was a sequence with this great uh, comedian named Malik Pincholi where he and he goes on t Billy decides to go on Tinder dates. He's going to start dating yeah. and they, and um, and he ends up getting he meets a guy who's really into nipple play and it's like this it's a sequence that's so funny. Yeah. Um, and then a second there was a pride at the pride parade. This massive pride fight breaks out. And we had to cut both sequences because they didn't they didn't fit in the plot. It'll be on the DVD. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. If they, oh, yeah. if that exists. I mean, if they still exist by then, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I write a DVD column still, so I, I hope they do. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, it's that's. But then you get the you know the steroid scene, which could easily have been one of those. Like in a in a in a, in a less tight movie, that would be the, like, it's a little bigger than the other scene, and it comes at like a heavier moment. We can move on from that, but it's it's this perfect like we need to break the character a little bit just to like put him back together. And that's, that's also just fun. Like, cause you, you've watched this like very tightly wound character and you know, like that character has to like, go off the deep end at least once. And like, what's a better way than like yell, like Roy Page? Like it just, it's such a like, shouldn't work as well as it does, but I'm sure you like, when you did it, you're like, oh shit, this works really well. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was uh yeah, that was one of those sequences. It was so funny. And the him growing out in the gym, that's the germ of the idea came, I don't know if, you, if you've talked to Billy, but the germ of the idea came from a Billy on the Street uh, um, episode where he was doing um, tailgating for Wicked and he was <laughs> acting like Broey. And he had like Jason Sudeikis and they were Broey. And he talked to a friend of his who said, uh, and he dressed like that backward, backward baseball guy. And his friend was like, a gay friend of his was like, you were hot when you did that. You should do that. You should dress like that and do that voice. And he was like, what are you talking about? And so the, the whole the germ of it was like, oh, that's the yeah. scene. And so so it started with that. And then we figured out this whole movie. But, uh, I, but yeah. I haven't talked to him. But a funny part was I was at a press screening in New York like a week before leaving for TIFF. And he was doing a segment right by the theater in Chelsea. Yeah. And I was, and I was he was doing like, oh, bros comes out next week. And I was like, I hope he doesn't come to talk to me because it's not going to wind up in the show. Because I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to see your movie next week. Yeah. Gonna, like, this isn't the funny part. Um, but... The movie is funny and the movie is is oddly well, not oddly like is important because it's it's doing something that we legitimately haven't seen before and you should just be very proud oh thank you so much yeah thank you oh, thank you and thank you so much for doing this this was this was awesome as you can tell fan of your work oh well thanks <laughs> thanks thank for your you. kind words of course take care